Ben Shapiro is upset at me. After all of my many years of yelling at Ben Shapiro and Ben Shapiro only covering me whenever like the Hogwarts controversy happened or because I bought a house or whatever, I have finally gotten Ben Shapiro to notice me and respond to me, but in the saddest way possible. This is the first time he's replied. It must have struck a chord because I didn't even add him. I said, I saw Barbie last night. I don't get what Ben Shapiro could be mad about other than the fact that he failed as a screenwriter and now everything offends him. To which he replied, I used small words for you just for you though i feel like i have broken him this was done at 5 a.m or 8 a.m his time almost 24 hours later i need more people to know that his origin story being rejected from the good wife and his agent said it's because of your politics yeah we can watch the video if you want i was thinking we watched that video after because this is a good time to watch that does anyone have an easy screenshot for me to post right here of all of the daily wire flops daily wire gross movie re sales it's like really bad i think it's like seven hundred thousand dollars total or something oh here it is i know why that's eight hundred dollars by the way it's still funny to make fun of them for it they didn't actually release it they just did it one night tell the truth that you've called him small feminine a fascist that can't make his wife come and this is the thing he responds to yeah because this is the one thing that he's like legitimately upset about i know why this is eight hundred dollars the reason why is because they never actually released it in the theaters they released it at one theater for friends and family that's why it grossed eight hundred dollars i know i looked into it the other movies have also been failures though Overall, The Daily Wire has only brought in $700,000 total from three movies, okay? It's, you know. Did you see his new show? Kind of looks like a conservative ripoff of another show. Facts don't care about your feelings. Oh my God, that's Johnny Harris. Oh my God, he stole Johnny Harris's flow. Bro, Johnny Harris needs to sue him. Oh my God. If I'm Johnny Harris, I'm losing my mind at this, okay? That's actually fucked up. This whole, like, I'm destroying you with facts and logic shit fell out of favor so quickly because so much of the nonsense that they're advocating for is quite literally devoid of facts and absolutely dependent on their own personal feelings on the matter. Even my fucking normie friends have been telling me, like, they find it real suspicious that Ben Shapiro's, like, hired a stylist and is, like, trying to be more appealing to Zoomers. And that's why he's wearing the, like, the, the denim jacket it and stuff like that but the thing is like it, this doesn't work if you're ben shapiro you know what i mean if you've built an entire career off of being like the suit wearing guy online and your entire personality is like wearing a suit and being really really serious about things that are not supposed to be serious if you're caught saying wet ass p word for example okay you can't do the i'm the, actually a cool guy now like i'm a cool guy that's appealing to the younger audiences like you can't do that even i can't fucking do that Okay, and I'm 32 and I haven't had the Ben Shapiro style. Every political commentator is going through that same phase at the moment, myself included. Zoomers are not exactly interested unless it's like some esoteric Nazi shit or some like crunchy granola spiritual shit. Most Zoomers are just like, I don't give a fuck, this sucks. We all did our part. We threw up the black fist during the Black Lives Matter protests and that never went anywhere. So I am no longer interested in this stuff. You know what I mean? Give me the skibbity toilet all day every day that's what, that's what i care about i want to know about skibbity toilet all of the zoomers in my audience right now are not exactly the norm let's be real okay I know you. there's plenty of you in here right now, but you guys are not the norm. Ultimately, if you live in America, the system is designed for you to not give a shit. Why would you give a shit? Who are you going to vote for? Joe Biden? Okay. What's Joe Biden going to do for you? Is he going to change your life? You know what I mean? I think a lot of people also have fatigue post the Trump era where they just like don't want to pay attention to politics anymore. And that's why they voted for the normalcy candidate with Joe Brandon. And that is exactly what happened. The normalcy candidate brought things back to normal. Does anyone have that antiquated video of Ben Shapiro talking about his uh, failed screenwriting aspirations with that old lady on public access television. Ben Shapiro, primetime propaganda. This is a very unique way to understand what Ben Shapiro's inception is and why he feels the things he feels, specifically resentment towards Hollywood. Because remember, Ben Shapiro grew up in California. No matter how much he tries to LARP his way out of that, he grew up in California. His father was a musician. He's a 
classically trained musician himself, and he always wanted to be a part of Hollywood. This is his villain origin story. This is the book he wrote about Hollywood after Hollywood rejected his scripts. Reminder that Ben Shapiro's weird vendetta against Hollywood began when he was denied a writing job on The Good Wife. Shapiro, an aspiring scriptwriter, said he has direct experience. He was close to getting in the door with CBS The Good Wife, but then got a cold shoulder. He had no idea why until his agent told him another agent at his firm Googled him and discovered his political leaning. Welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. My guest today, Ben Shapiro, has written Primetime Propaganda, the true Hollywood story this is of all how beautiful. the left has made our country took over your TV. You seem to pinpoint the authors of those shows as being liberal Jews. Well, not all of them. I mean, Susan Harris is not Jewish. There are plenty Nor of- Nor is Gary Marshall. Nor is Gary Marshall. I don't, I certainly don't say that all of them are Jewish. There, there's, of course, a lot of Jews in Hollywood, but that's because there are a lot of Jews at the top of any industry. Jews happen to be very hardworking. <laughs> it isn't just that. They have a point of view that can be considered comic and humorous. Uh, that, that's true. I mean, there's a unique brand of Jewish humor, and that's been true since the beginning. I mean, go back to your show of shows. Everybody in that writer's room is a New York Jew, and that's good. I mean, this is good stuff. This is not a rip on, on Jews. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Right off the jump, this is a contentious interview, okay? Right off the fucking rip. Connie Martinson's got some words for Ben, okay? She has got some words for Benny Boy from the jump. Came in hot. The people who write TV are incredibly talented. They have a political agenda, but they're very talented. Well, let me say, I've yet to know of too many conservatives, which is where you put yourself, who are funny. It has to do with a humor that is transferable to everyday living. I utterly disagree with that. I think there there can be conservatives who are funny. Liberals well, may not find them funny. I mean, okay, Ann Coulter for conservatives is funny. Okay, for liberals, she's not funny. Bill Maher, for liberals, hilarious. For conservatives, not funny. Oh, look how things have changed. Politics as the form of their humor, but... Bill Cosby is relatively conservative. The idea that conservatism is inherently unfunny is not true. It's that conservatives have abandoned the playing field of humor and narrative. No, conservatism, I think, is inherently not funny. It's not, because humor is supposed to point out the ridiculousness of our existence, but it's inherently degenerate. And if you you're a conservative, your job is to basically go back to prior norms, like you fear change. Now, I think in modern day, a lot of liberals have gotten a very conservative attitude towards humor, which has kind of bastardized the realm of comedy a little bit. Conservatives are funny unintentionally. They're not funny deliberately. Conservatives are fucking hilarious. They're even funnier than liberals. And liberals can be funny as well, but conservatives are extra funny, but just not when they're trying to be funny. Do me a favor. Define for me, what is a liberal? Okay, a liberal is somebody who believes in uh, pro-choice. They're pro-gay marriage. They believe in big government with regard to growth of government on domestic policy side. They believe the government should be used to redistribute wealth and rectify the inequalities of everyday life. Um, and they believe that uh, on foreign policy, for the most part, we should attempt to solve things through diplomacy, not only as a first measure, but as a last measure. And if we cannot you know, agree on, on a diplomatic means of solving the problem, we should hardly ever commit the military. And I think that that's a, that's a relatively a basic conservative summation. Conservative is... A conservative would be you know, almost the opposite, right, On with regard to abortion and gay marriage, anti-abortion, anti-gay marriage, uh, much more for the uh, the acting out of traditional religious values in everyday life. Dude, this is really funny to me, I think. I mean, he's just describing qualities that you would consider hilarious, you know what I mean? He's really making a good argument as to why conservatives are fucking laugh out loud hilarious. Government, much smaller government that does not interfere in the economic market, per se, uh, much Personally, more laissez-faire. how do you feel about overpopulation? I don't think that overpopulation is a problem. Oh. Okay. I think bad government's a problem. I don't think overpopulation's a problem. Around the world. Around the world. I wonder what his takes are on this stuff now, because this is like 11 years old. He's not wrong about the overpopulation not being a problem thing. I do know, having talked with some of the ultra-conservative, that they are very concerned, as you said, about anti-abortion, but they don't care about schooling. The Where the government would come in, there is definitely no action. They seem to be kind of separate issues to me. I mean, you can be for the not killing of fetuses and, or babies, and you know, depend and, and also be for... Wait, did he say fetus and then correct himself to say Cleveland. baby? And you can be for the not killing of fetuses. And for not killing of fetuses. Or babies. Or babies. A conservative look like a hard hat, lower class guy who is who's ignorant about the world around him. Yeah, except at the time, that is not how conservatives were seen and perceived. He's talking about like a Nixon era change. The notion that like hard hat wearing guys that are blue collar are actually like Republican Party voters portrayed against anti-war hippies. 
is a relatively newer phenomena. And at the time, a lot of the hard hat wearing motherfuckers were voting for the Democratic Party. A lot of the blue collar types were not necessarily always conservative. The way that conservatives were perceived back then was incredibly elitist, incredibly openly elitist, wealthy, defending the interests of the wealthy. They were all seen as like elite society guys. You talk about MASH, Vietnam. We were in Vietnam and not very few people spoke Vietnamese. And it was a war that didn't really come out right. And we can argue the politics of Vietnam, but the, but the point of the book is that there was a clear political position being taken by the folks who were, who were talking about Vietnam on TV. What Hollywood has always lied about is the idea that they are market-based actors, that they are completely and solely concerned with the dollar. This is the excuse that they always go. I love that Ben has been advocating against the material realities from the jump. They were always fucking market-based actors, dude. What the fuck? Are you, what are you talking about? Your content is mid. It fucking sucks. There are certainly, you know, conservative art and conservative creators of art or even straight up Republican creators of art. But ultimately, Hollywood in and of itself has a lot of conservative aspects to it. If it was so simple, then your inherently conservative movies would, would do really well. You know what I mean? Look, in the book, I talk at length about the history of TV, and I say that TV didn't really move to the left until you hit about 1970, right? So in the in the 50s and 60s, TV was, was much more moderate in terms of political mm -hmm. orientation. All the shows that you just mentioned, All in the Family, yeah. MASH, those are shows that come about in 1970, 71, 72 with CBS, right? Those are... That that only comes about in the early 70s. I talk about it in specific terms about the, about the transformation of mm. politics on television, which, like I say, only really occurred and only really switched over heavily liberal in Tell the early me, 1970s. Are you going to run for politics? Yeah, at some point, maybe. I'd consider it. Yeah. If the parties stay where they currently are as a Republican. Yeah, not a Tea Party? Oh, well, the Tea Party isn't an independent party. All right. Let me say there's much to be discussed in this book. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you very much for coming. He's like the anti-Tarantino, just A-worded espousal with very skewed view of visual media history yeah i mean he's always been a cultural critic from the jump whether it be on porn whether it be on any kind of media and he's always kind of missed the mark his entire career is riddled with stuff like this including massive failures and just like attempts at trying to write fiction that kind of shows you where his motivations are or what his spite driven rhetoric comes from where his spite driven rhetoric comes from yeah it's about teamwork Why did, you did you move we need to organize a stair everybody leave before before his son gets <laughs> together we can do Teamwork it. Teamwork makes the dream work. We oh, that was so easy. We are the best. Oh god, this is progress though. We are so much better at not we pushing buttons. We are getting now. better. Oh, oh, oh too much dangling! Okay, what's easier, passing legislation or this? Be honest. Uh, 